good evening guys welcome to the webinar today uh, i am vinayak kaingan i am a pediatric surgery resident uh, i have also been a practicing minimal access surgeon before i joined my mch and uh, i know prashant for a pretty long time so i am very delighted to announce the start of our minimal access surgery entrance examination preparation course uh, this is going to be a pretty interesting course which is going to be theory focused uh, which is going to focus on how to clear your entrance exams and uh, Today's webinar is not going to be about me. Today, uh, Prashant is going to be talking about overall minimal access surgery, the course. You can ask any doubts to him, so it's going to be his show today. Uh, all I have to say is that minimal access surgery is the future, not just for people who are preparing for entrance, but for every other specialty, be it GI surgery, urology, uh, pediatric surgery, uh, oncology. So anybody who is interested in the theoretical aspects of minimal access surgery, either for an entrance, or if you are already a practicing surgeon or a mch or a drn resident i would say this is a fantastic opportunity for you to brush up your knowledge uh, learn a little bit about minimal access surgery about the specialty of minimal access surgery i would say there is always a good market a good scope for a good laparoscopic surgeon with the advent of especially the boom of hernia as a subspecialty hernia and awr as a subspecialty we are seeing that good minimal access surgeons who can operate on uh, hernia as well can perform great awr work are always in demand uh, along with the uh, increasing presence of obesity and the rise in bariatric procedures in india i would say uh, that the dawn of minimal access surgery is yet to arrive and we have had excellent minimal access surgery courses uh, both in north india and south india in south india we have jam um minakshi mission and in north we have uh, great places like uh, max or prashant say gangaram um and so many other good places so i would say utilize this opportunity to learn about the course uh, so before you need as results come and before you can join your mch i would say uh, either even if you're not joining minimal access surgery i think this is a great opportunity for you to brush up your knowledge so uh, over to you prashant thanks a lot so we would be starting uh, i had lot of queries you which you submitted from the google form so from through this presentation i would like to first uh, solve all those queries then we can take personal queries also through the uh, chat box okay so let's start so uh, what we want to give the message here that the scope and target of this course would be mainly would be targeting mch minimal access surgery program which is currently going on at aims new delhi and aims Re, uh, rishikesh and uh, the uh, the uh, entrance which we uh, which we are supposed to give is iniss and other program is the fnb minimal access surgery which is uh, th- uh, for which you have to appear for fet so uh, all those who are post ms dnb surgery uh, candidates and want to pursue a career in minimal access surgery uh, should attend this course so uh, what uh, will be having in this course is uh, there will be uh, there will be concept based classes which will include theory mcqs image based questions and the notes will be available through app the classes will be delivered through online live mode and the videos will also be envelop- will be available as recorded videos through app so uh, in most of the queries i uh, got the question that is it a skill enhancing course or will be getting hands on or will be getting some certification so it is not a skill enhancing course and we, it's just a preparatory course for the mch minimal access and the uh, fnb minimal access uh, exam so coming to the mch minimal access surgery which is currently uh, available at aims new delhi and aims rishikesh we have already the iniss forms available and uh, the stage 1 exam is on 28th of october and uh, in this uh, exam there is a 90 minutes exam in which uh, 80 questions are there there is uh, one is to three minus marking though they haven't declared in uh, declared in prospectus that what will the ratio of questions but uh, after appearing uh, for last few times i got to know that there is a ratio of 30 to 50 that 30 questions are from the general surgery part and 50 questions are from the core minimal access surgery uh coming to the next uh, uh, exam that you are supposed to give is fnb minimal access surgery that is the fet 
last year it was uh, it was held on 10th of february still there is no notification out uh, it is a uh, it is a uh, 100 uh, question exam uh, and the uh, question paper is divided into part a and part b part a is supposed to be of general surgery and part b is of minimal access and bariatric surgery so there is a negative marking of 4 is to 1 and approx 40 seats are present all over india so uh, what uh, the basic uh, need of this course arose because there is no guidance about this course and uh, uh, candidates usually learn through hit and uh, trial method like i did so basically this is the core book of minimal access surgery course that you are supposed to read that is the sages manual both this uh, books are very elaborate mass volume books which uh, it's very difficult to complete from cover to cover and uh, the additional three books which uh, this uh, through uh, which uh, entrance questions are asked are these three books and this is also voluminous book so what uh, i learned during my preparation that uh, uh, that uh, it is very difficult for a candidate to read all these books memorize it and solve questions which appear from this book so uh, we analyzed all these five books uh, broke them in 18 segments through which uh, generally in last few years questions has been asked and we have prepared separate classes which will include theory about them and followed by few mcqs to get to know about you the topics so we'll have uh, the, the schedule you'll be getting the schedule if you join this course and this is a very comprehensive course will cover all the aspects which are asked in mch minimal access or fnb minimal access uh, extra to this we'll also discuss some general surgery topics which are usually very favorite uh, for the examiners when preparing for this papers we'll have some few mock tests and uh, uh, the main issue that people who qualify for uh, stage 1 ini ss and uh, appear for stage 2 they don't have any guidance program currently in the country so they are very clueless so we will also take care of this and finally the counseling guidance for the fet that is uh, where to join and how to join okay this so this is are the gross uh, queries which i got through the google form and rest you can ask now thank you so uh, in the chat box i got the first query that uh, can we do mch after apt the basic problem with the mch minimal access surgery at teams is that there is a age limit so you need to be uh, less than 35 years of age before uh, appearing for the entrance exam that is the inis so if you are if you will be uh, less than 35 years after completion of apt then you can do mch but i don't think that will be required because fet uh, because the fnb is such a gross and uh, comprehensive course that you will be trained good enough that you won't need uh, the need of doing mch uh, so can you suggest good college for fnb i will be doing this uh, post uh, uh, fnb exam in our counseling guidance session and uh, i think uh, we have lot of time for those things because that will happen around march april so next query is uh, if uh, one is to choose for fet or mch for math what he should choose so basically uh, if you want to be in the academic uh, as if you want to pursue academics as your career then mch should be better but uh, if you want to be in the uh, corporate or establish your own practice then fnb is a much better program than mch because it is more uh, uh, surgical skill oriented and it will train you in a much better way than the mch will do but uh, for the academic involvement no doubt mch is the gold standard so fnb exams occur uh, once in a year and it usually it used to have happen in september pre covid era but now it uh, it is conducted once a year in around january or february so uh, there is no thesis uh, in F- fnb but you'll have lot of academics uh, in form of uh, uh, journal cup Uh, uh, presentations uh, uh, video presentations and uh, various conferences and everything you'll have a lot of academics 
you will be writing papers but uh, as that there is no thesis uh, submission required for the fnb curriculum uh, so uh, is this course you, yes uh, this course will be useful because uh, what Uh, uh i saw d- during my preparation phase that uh, post mca gi surgery or surgical oncology or in some aspect uh, urology and pediatric surgery also they need to get trained in the minimal access skills so that they can practice uh, in the current scenario so uh, those candidates also uh, tend to learn minimal access uh, uh, concepts and the uh, skills post their mca to uh, execute their skills which have they learned in their mca so it will be useful uh after mca gi can a pt be done yes there is no um, uh, no one will uh, bar you from appearing a pt you can always do so fnb next exam will be around january uh, what we think and uh, as we discussed there are around 35 to 40 seats present in uh, um, fnb and uh, maybe uh, i would say 15 20 good seats are there so there is no uh, uh, material available currently for the minimal invasive surgery for iniss and that's where this course comes for so uh, uh, yes you may join if you are already doing fnb math uh, no issues uh, stipends are variable during the fnb course Uh, there is lots of variation you can check on the site and the site will guide you about the various stipends uh, given to the fnb residents uh, so similar fellowship offered so what we need to understand that this fellowship is a, a fellowship of 2 years fnb fellowship and uh, this is a nmc recognized fellowship and you get proper proper hands on you get trained on your surgical skills what you are basically uh, talking about other fellowships in minimal access abroad are mainly uh, like certification courses though uh, they don't offer much hands on or they they just uh, give you a certification so there is no age limit for fet uh competition is more in fnb or M- mca gi surgery onco surgery uh it's almost equivalent you need to be on your toes to crack both these exams what is the d- duration of the course the fnb is of 2 years and mch minimal access is of 3 years uh so what should we expect in fnb courses provided we do from good hospital what kind of procedures should be ex- expect hands on so this is quite variable but uh, uh, as we discussed the main curriculum of the uh, laparoscopic surgery is the uh, minimal access surgery is the gallbladder biliary tract various types of hernias uh, uh, esophagus benign diseases uh, hiatal hernias and uh, then the something you will be getting for the adrenal parathyroid and uh, thyroid the minimal invasive approach and uh, some aspect of robotics uh, how to join this course and what is the fees you will be getting uh, this answer from the team through brochure uh, sir what will for uh, this will be uh, the covering for the ini ct stage 1 exam on 28th october uh, we'll be trying to cover as much as possible the relevant topics for the ini ss so that you are prepared enough to appear for that so yes the basics of uh, minimal access surgery is not taught in ms courses and the residents are very deficient about it so though they are doing mch in onco gastro uropedia they are uh, not well versed with the mass aspect so they will be benefited yeah that is the uh, uh, that is the provisional schedule and will uh, modulate it to target the ini ss exam also so there is a long list of uh, uh, institutions offering uh, fellowship courses that is fnb you can check it on the uh, website there is almost uh, what i believe 20 to 25 institutions offering fnb courses and uh, uh, yes all fnb yes most of the institutions have robotics uh, with laparoscopy in their curriculum and they give you initial basic idea of the robotics too 
so yes you will be getting notes uh, uh, on app along with the video lectures and uh, you can make handmade notes also during the uh, classes also yes uh, at the end of every class we will be discussing few mcqs and uh, before exams you will be having few mock tests so that you further increase your mcq exposure but uh, i don't think uh, you, uh, th this much exposure would be good enough for you and won't need any more than that so only the class mcqs the mcqs which we, which will be discussed post class and the mock test would be enough for you uh that's a very difficult question to answer that comparison regarding future in sub specialities as mcq gastro euro fnb math so it, it is uh, uh, it is you what uh, you will have to decide that what you exactly want from your life and then only you can uh, pursue this courses basically fnb math is all uh, covers all the uh aspects of uh, minimal access from all the specialties which are more commonly uh, practiced and if, from which you will be getting more of the patient and in mch gastro euro uh, there is a wide course but uh, there is a need of further specialization of further getting trained after this courses so uh, mfnb math is kind of a definitive course that you will be start settling after this course because you will have some skill uh, in the in the execution of math how to uh, so uh, this course would be just enough and uh, trust me you won't be able to uh, cover all the books and remember them uh, you just have to uh, read ba basically bailey and sebastian uh, to cover the general surgery aspect and rest will will take care of we'll be discussing about few general surgery aspects also to cover the topics which are more frequently stressed upon but uh, uh, in extra to this course i think bailey and sebastian would be enough yeah conversions are always there open surgeries are always th there but uh, that's not a routine uh usually uh, what uh, happened this year that uh, we had a last date in may so you get uh, you get to join at least uh, before 50 you are supposed to join before 15th of may so uh, minimal access surgery is a uh, is a uh, sub speciality in itself you can notice that recently in bhubneshwar kgmu and bhu also started fellowship uh, in uh, minimal access surgery and they soon will be uh, there are many institutes which have done uh, started doing so and there will be soon uh, starting mch programs in such institutes so it's a well recognized speciality it's growing and it has a huge impact comparing to the general core specialties which we usually prepare of yeah uh, preparation of neat versus fnb doesn't require much change you need to be thorough with the general surgery aspects what you do for the neat ss f fnb i think uh, joining this course uh, for the minimal access and bariatric surgery component would be enough and we will be through so uh, it's not much of uh, change in your strategy or mode of preparation uh i think uh, th this are post exam counseling session questions and will be answering it after the after you clear fpt and will have a elaborate discussion on all this so mis fellowship from abroad and from india are are very much different because uh, it is very tough for to get a mis fellowship in us basically because there are a lot of uh, 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 exams you need to clear the us usmld all the steps then there is a, a strict matching pattern and you'll have you should have a great lor and a great profile to uh, clear it so abroad and india are much different in aspect of entrance uh, prashant i would like to answer that question also uh, so those who are planning to go and actually uh, do it in the us you definitely need a usmle mis fellowships in us are 
pretty great the focus is more on bariatric so yes. kind of bariatric cases you would do there it's i don't think you would get anywhere in india because the volume of bariatric is absolutely excellent there there are a couple of surgeons in india who have done that written their usmle worked uh, done a non accredited acgme fellowship non accredited non acgme fellowship because an acgme accredited fellowship you have to do a us residency so if you're doing a non acgme accredited fellowship i think it's uh, the, you can do it after general surgery over here uh so again uk there is nothing called as a minimal access surgery fellowship you work only in colorectal units uh, you work in uh, upper gi and all again if your focus is going to be on bariatric then you know abroad is not a bad option at all yeah what do you prashant okay uh do fnb have fewer seats and uh, the there is almost similar competition as compared to the neat ss uh, there is not much difference and uh, the seat to candidate ratio is almost similar so there is nothing changed from compared to the neat ss and the fnb because seats are also less uh, i think uh, vinayak sir will be better person to answer this question about the courses in singapore and hong kong so uh, for uh, um, be it mch minimal access or fet uh, what i can say is that you need to uh, you need to cover bailey and selston completely and for the mass aspect what you can do is uh, start reading the basic the volume 1 of the sages that is the this book the sages manual well, volume 1 uh, this you can read and start developing taste of it and rest we can cover in our course is just that it is it will be it is difficult to uh, read and completely understand and remember all both these two volumes because they are voluminous volumes uh i think uh, i can't comment on that there are variation in various institutes but uh, still the top institutes have a good exposure and they train you well for basic bailey and love and something and few topics from the sebastian would be enough the general aspects of the uh, general surgery the basic i'm very sure about what is now uh prashant uh, yeah. regarding that question about uh, leaving the seats uh, yeah. see i think uh, i'm not very sure about uh, fortis gurgaon but uh, max vaishali is one of the best units under one of the top most surgeons in delhi uh, yes Yes. Dr. Vivek Bhattal runs the unit, and it's a it's a fantastic unit. The kind of work they do is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So uh, I don't know about uh, this thing, but uh, they do, uh, you know, uh, do a pretty happy. Very sure about uh, how it goes. Uh, so yeah, and one more thing about courses abroad, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore. These are all very short term courses. They don't offer very very long courses. Uh, so if you are reasonably post. fnb i think they are great options but the best option would obviously be taiwan because taiwan would not be it's not a minimal access surgery course again yes. you have to choose your specialty it's upper gi bariatric or colorectal and uh, some of the best masters in bariatric and uh, colorectal are there over there in taiwan and i would say that it's going to take you at least 6 uh, months to one year so you're not going to get hands on if you're not going to spend planning to spend at least 6 months over there in taiwan and uh, there are a lot of people in india who have uh, trained in taiwan and I, i would say it's a great option uh, to be honest but uh, uh, you would need a base on which to build before you go over there uh, skipping your basic training in india is not the right option yeah sorry prashant yeah thank you so i ashik is is asking about uh, centers centers yes yeah. i think uh, that's best answer after counseling but uh, because this is a doubt which is a lot of people are asking in private i will just say it's prashant it makes sense why i say that uh, gem uh, gem uh, in coimbatore uh, galaxy uh, in pune gangaram to operate uh, uh, quite a bit yeah 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 pune yeah uh, pune galaxy yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> 
there are almost 10 good centers most ss in ural yeah yeah i think i think we'll make a list of them during the counseling uh, uh during the counseling as well uh but yeah uh, but only one thing post ss in urology i would say minimal exercise in particular institute uh you would teach you the principles but i think priti hospital hyderabad would be one of the best institutes to uh train post mcs urology hey what do you prashant sorry sorry for interrupting okay sir so uh the basically is the, if we, if you still getting hands on during your general surgery uh, uh, uh training or if you are if you are joined as a faculty in general surgery program but uh, the the minute effects the the delicacy of minimal access i think would be better known when you join this program and learn it from the from the dance of this field so even if you are getting hands on but uh, still i think you need to get uh, properly trained in a curriculum based course i think i would consider my institutes as a best institute in delhi or near delhi that would be max saket so uh, any tips for ini ss upcoming exam uh, for the ini the basic thing is that uh, they focus uh, more on the basic aspect of uh, the minimal access surgeries like ergonomic uh, the access the tissue approximation they don't consider the systemic uh, minimal access that is the system based uh, minimal access surgeries uh, a lot but they more focus on the basic aspect that is the volume one of the stages so what you can do is uh, first you get thorough with your general surgery aspect that you must have done uh, for the uh, that neat ss exam and post that uh, you what you can do is you start reading uh, volume one stages manual so you will get to know and understand few topics and uh, the thing which are not as from this book uh, will be coming in our course because they are all scattered and uh, uh, to compile those things and read is a very difficult task because we have we don't uh, usually have that much time that we can read everything and answer questions through it so what you can do basically is complete your daily and semester and start reading stages manual 1 you are uh, not confident about your neat ss exam uh you can appear for ss after also after joining fnb but uh, uh, i don't think you will feel need of it and uh, you will continue this course and you will understand the course and uh, you will have no doubt, doubt about its uh, practical applicable uh, applicability and uh, you may but you won't uh, feel need of it uh, that our team can tell you that when would be the last date for you to join but uh, thank you thank you so much i don't uh, so just a uh, just saying you will be able to join so those who want to join afterwards also we can but i would advise you to join uh, right from the start because uh, if you are a part of the live course um, it allows you to uh, clear your doubts then and there because uh, that's of great benefit for anyone who's attending the course for sure so how do you suggest to give best in iniss uh, uh, i think uh, though since you are have already uh, you have you must be preparing for the neat ss and now you want to appear for iniss for mch mark uh, so what you can do is uh, just revise your general surgery and the, all the preparation you did for neat ss join this course and uh, even though uh, even after this you have time you can start reading sages man that would be the best thing and i think that will uh, help you get through that would be more than enough so i already answered this question if you want to pursue a career in uh, academics so for academics mch is a, always a gold standard course that you want to join some academic institute but if you want to Uh, pursue your career in corporate private sector or uh, set up your own practice then fnb is a much better and practical course that uh, help you uh, all the problems you will be facing in your practice uh 
do there are no such book for the ini ss but uh, we'll be we have compiled all the questions and we'll be discussing in a chapter wise uh, distribution in our sessions all the previous year question yeah we'll be doing so so you will uh, you will be uh, you will be having answers of all the questions which are already been asked in ini ss mch math exam and uh, uh yeah uh, yeah yeah core schedule is majorly after the exam date but uh, we are going to modulate it and we will try to complete as much as possible at least uh, major part of it before the iniss exam uh the basic uh, thing is uh, with the mch is you must have learned in this slide that it is uh, the aims what what they are offering is min mch minimal access and general assembly so you you uh, have few obligation for the general surgery department as well so you need to attend all those emergencies so the mch is little hectic than fnb but uh, uh, in fnb there is core elective uh, uh, minimal access work so it is more practical course than mch uh there is a pattern of uh, uh, pattern of hands on in uh, minimal ex in the central institutes you need to earn it you have a proper uh, you spend time and then you, then they start giving you so i think uh, that's not an issue Uh, that uh, that's not a big as big thing as people consider so if you are joining this two courses um, be it mch at any of the aims or the fnb minimal access at the good center you should be convinced enough that you will you will get trained good enough to have your own good practice after the completion of this course that shouldn't be your concern because in the end they you get trained for everything Uh, if there are no more queries, I think Prashant, we can end the session. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, if you have any more queries, then you can. I think uh, we have had a pretty good session, and I can. Uh, so, I just want to tell you that Prashant, I know Prashant for a couple of years right now, and uh, I can assure you that he is a very sincere uh, and a very diligent student. So, uh, right from the days I've started such as I've been in touch with him, and uh, at every point of time, he used to stop, ask me doubts. Uh, And make sure that whatever content we had on the app was right. So, uh, Prashant has been a very diligent student, uh, and I'm very glad to have him as a faculty here today. So, it's a matter of personal pride for me today. So, uh, thank you so much, Prashant, uh, for volunteering to do this, and uh, it makes me pretty happy uh, uh, personally uh, on a very personal level. And um, as a bonus session, I think what I have been also planning is that uh, uh, I have spent a lot of time uh, learning minimal access surgery from some of the best people in the country, and I can assure you that. Uh, Uh, it is a skill which will never go uh, waste. And one bonus session which we can plan if you guys are interested is minimal access surgery in pediatrics as well. Okay. Uh, so I I would be glad to take the class. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you.